working on the race car this is called a redneck oil change oil changes are pretty simple right oil changes are always easy on a race car they're not very difficult at all some people do them very frequently some people do it every few passes some people do it every you know every five races every 10 races everybody seems to do it just a little bit different it depends on the quality of oil and it depends on how the oil looks the quality and if you're getting any moisture in if you're getting any fuel in it so most people that run gasoline if you run gas the oil very rarely mil milks up the only time it milks up is when you blow a head gasket or when something goes bad when you change the oil when you pull the drain plug on a gasoline engine uh, vehicle then most of the time the oil is going to look pretty decent it's not going to look bad it's not going to be milky it's not going to be in bad shape but we run methanol and when you run methanol methanol has the unique strange ability we run it so rich typically at idle uh, typically you know going down the track there's so much going through it and methanol dissolves it cleans it makes its way to the oil it also produces condensation so typically when when we, we we need to change oil about every race honestly and so what happens is when you pull the drain plug it comes out a watery methanol mess and this depends on the oil uh, a lot of your cheaper oils when you have a cheaper oil in it it's going to be milked up so bad it's not even funny when you have more expensive oils sometimes the oil and the water will separate and so that's what we found we, we've got an oil brad pin is what we use and there might be some other oils that do this as well but brad pin if you let it sit if it sits for a few days uh, a week and it just sits in the car you take the caps off of the valve covers it separates really good most of the the condensation and most of the methanol it tends to go to the bottom of the oil pan you know oil is going to float it's just like you get an oil slit when you have an oil spill um, out in the ocean the oil floats on top so the water and the methanol go to the bottom and then you can drain that stuff off and then you can reuse it you can typically just get a little bit of the water out and then put your drain plug back in now um if you have the ability if you've got a, a dry sump and you can uh put a, a tank heater on it then that would help you can get it bring it up to a high enough temperature 170 180 degrees is what i've seen and it, it'll it'll help keep the oil clean um a lot of bracket racers that run on methanol what they do is they have a, a dual fuel system and so what happens is they crank it up on gasoline to get heat in the motor and then they race on methanol and then when they get done before they load it into trailer they turn it back on gasoline and then what they do is they let it run and get the motor up to 200 220 degrees and you pull the the caps off of it so that any condensation can evaporate out from the heat and and then they load it into trailer and it's hot and then when it's hot the oil cleans up better but my car doesn't have that i don't have the ability i don't have a dual fuel system so mine runs rich mine idles richer than you know a lot of vehicles do um it just seems like mine likes to be idling about 4.6 air fuel ratio and that's pretty doggone rich and so it milks the oil up pretty bad and so when the when the temperature when you don't get the temperature up i don't have gasoline then sometimes it condenses and it gets a lot it gets real milky but the brad pin is really good about staying clean but let's go drain it out i'm gonna show you what i do with my brad pin See how much water comes out first. This has been sitting for a week. Oil's pretty clean. It's got a little bit of milk to it. So the oil is pretty clean. It's got a little bit of moisture and a little alcohol in it, but not bad at all. 
not having the radiator in it is helping the oil temperature stay up and keeping the oil clean. So that is really good. And not bad at all. Can't really see it. It's got a little bit of milk to it though. It's not terrible. Well, let me show you what we do to it. Since we're on a budget and this oil is very expensive. And most of the time you wouldn't change it quite as often as we do. Check this out. Wow, now that is cleaner than the oil typically comes out of my motor. Now this motor's fresh. The motor is, doesn't have but a few passes on it. Uh, I think I've only had it together, I think I've been to the track with it three or four times. So it's not got a ton of passes on it. So the rings are really good. The rings, rings are really tight. I did gap them a little closer than I normally do this time as well. So um, that's probably helping contribute, but probably the biggest thing that contributed, the, the car has been sitting for a week in the trailer. You saw that little bit, that hard, it, it, it missed my dog on oil paint, it come out so violent. That was mostly water. When it come out, that was the water and then it come out and the oil's fairly clean. Typically when we bring it out, the oil's all milky and it's all milked up. So Brad Penn is like I was saying, that's what I normally use. That's the oil that I, I use all the time. And that's what Randy uses in his. And he's the one that actually turned on turned, turned it on to me. Um, I was using, you know, just Rattel 1540 and it would mix up and it stays milky forever. Once the water and condensation, the alcohol gets mixed with that oil, it never separates. We were draining his out one day and I pulled the plug off the dry sump pan and it was like solid water for probably two seconds. And I was like, oh, this is unbelievable. It is unbelievable that the, the, the Brad Pen oil and the water separated and it separated clean. And so then I started doing some research and I heard of people cooking their oil to, to reuse it. And I know that sounds silly, but you know, typically you're not gonna be changing the oil on these things every race i mean if you were gasoline the oil the lubricating properties that stuff stays around for a very long time so changing it the only reason we change it so frequently in a methanol car is because it gets condensation in it it gets the methanol in it and it contaminates it and then when you've got the water and the the, the condensation going mixing with the oil then what happens now you you have less lubricant so it's not lubricating like it should so the solution is to heat it up Yes, you heard right, heat it up. So here you see, I got me a nice stainless steel pan. It's nice and clean. And so that oil is going in that pan on that hot plate. <laughs> you didn't think you could reuse oil in a race car, but you can. So uh, what we'll do is I'll put it on there. I'll get it in there and we'll get it hot and it'll start boiling off the condensation. Usually it takes about three or four hours. It's not a ton of work. I mean, it kind of does it itself. And then what I do is when I get it nice and boiled, I let it cool off and then I rebottle it. I'm a repackager of Brad Penn. And so then I use paint strainers and I'll put a paint strainer down in my, um, my funnel and then I pour it in. And so I can, I, I usually redo the, the oil a few times. And then when it starts looking funny, then I'll, I'll change it. I don't know if there's an exact science to it, but the, the Brad Penn is, I mean, it's really good at separating. Uh, it's crazy, it's amazing stuff. Love it, check it out. Check this out. Most of the condensation, that's it. It's in the bottom of the pan. And you can see it. It's hard to see it. But the condensation, see how the oil and the condensation, the oil and the, the oil that does not separate? But most of that is separated. So I'm not going to pour that in there. And then we'll cook this off real fast. And we'll just pour this out. This will be my waste oil. And then we'll rebottle it. And then I'll use it again. It's amazing. It is crazy that the oil does this. I 
Okay, so I'm gonna try not to drop my camera in the oil, but listen real close. And you can see over here on the side, the condensation and the alcohol is starting to boil off and you can hear it popping down in there. So what's what happens when I stir it? It's getting about 150 degrees or so now. I feel like I'm cooking. Cooking at the track. Look at all the, the bubbles. That, see the bubbles? More bubbles come up when you stir it. And that's because the condensation is and the alcohol is coming up. It's, it's releasing off the out of the bottom. And that's why I didn't pour a lot of it in there. But it did get a little bit in there. But you can see it's starting to, to move and the condensation, the methanol is boiling up. So you just stir it occasionally. And you can smell it. And the, you smell the methanol is what you smell. And whatever you do, do not do this in the house. Um, first time I ever done this, I did it on my stove. And that was bad. Like really bad. It was, um, the whole house smelled like methanol. And my wife was not a happy camper when she came home. And, uh, We've all done that, using the oven and stuff for race car that you're not supposed to. So, But this is definitely not something you want to do inside. You need adequate ventilation. All right, you can see this stuff is rolling like crazy now. It's getting hot. I've got my little burner set on four, but the oil, it'll never make it that high. You typically, after a couple hours, it'll get to 175, 200 degrees. But I mean, it's rolling now. Um, there's not much um, methanol in it. Um, most of the smell is going away. I can smell it still a little, but not a ton. So I'm going to let it go for a few more minutes. And just this agitation really it helps break the methanol apart in the water. It just evaporates off. Shoot, I lost my extension. It's hot enough where it was scalding, but um, I guess we could do some Brad Penn fried uh, fried fish. It's almost all gone, so I'll probably let it. I'll probably let it cook for another. Uh, probably let it cook for another thirty minutes or so, and then when I turn it off, it'll gradually cool down. And you see how the oil is now? It's getting darker, as far as it's less condensation. You can see, it's got less bubbles coming up. The methanol comes right off of it when you heat it up. So, I mean, it's, it's just one of those things, uh, it's easy to do. It does take a little bit of time. A lot of people probably won't take the time to do this. I mean, you know, I guess it depends on what your budget is and uh, what you can do. Another solution, another thing you can do too, I mean, is you can just drain a quart off at a time because most of the water is down at the bottom. And so it depends on how big of a hurry I'm in. Um, drain a quart of it off out of the oil pan and then just refill it a quart. You could do that every race and probably have pretty clean oil most of the time. But this right here gets all the moisture out and it just makes it so that it's uh, nice and clean. Okay, so I've had it off for a few minutes now. Most of the evaporation is done. Max 170, I think I saw 172, 170.8 degrees. So 170 degrees, it's been off for a couple minutes, so it's not, it may, it may have been 175, but uh, so about 170, 180 degrees is where it starts rolling off pretty good. And you see that oil is, man, it is nice and green. It really is a dark, deep green, so it's gonna be perfect. So, um, if you guys want to do some cheap, inexpensive oil change in the race car, 
I guess you can do this. I don't know if it's I don't know if anybody would recommend this. I've seen some people doing it on Inside Top Alcohol. If you go, uh, they've got a great website too. The forums Inside uh, Top Alcohol. You know, I'm not the only one to do it, but this is it's definitely interesting for sure. So that's my budget oil change and what I do. It's a little bit of work, but it works great. Saves you some money. Just trying to keep the oil clean on a budget. Brad Penn is really good oil. Don't know that they would recommend doing what we're doing, but we're doing it anyway. <laughs> we're having fun. We're going to do it on a budget. Y'all want to keep on learning my budget-minded secrets. Sometimes it blows up in my face and I have a disaster, but sometimes my budget stuff, it works good and it's no different than spending the high dollar parts. Well, it is a little bit different, but it is what it is. If y'all like what y'all are seeing, make sure y'all smash that subscribe button, hit the bell, like, comment, and I'll see y'all next time. Go fast and get some wind lights. Thanks.